this whole discussion of automation has been a constantly moving target. And so I'm going to just ask, like, where are we in the world of, yes, I want to automate that. No, I don't want to automate that. I think we are far along in the, yes, I want to automate things. And we are in the very beginning of, yes, I want to automate things that break things. I would say <clears throat> everybody agrees it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. But where the friction starts to enter is whether we're having a conversation around effectiveness or efficiency of the controls, which is how are you trying to measure success? Make your automations very deliberate per the task that you're trying to achieve at that period of time. So if your automation is to isolate an endpoint, make a firewall rule, disable an identity, don't have that entire workflow be a single playbook or a single runbook do each of those in their own step where the automation is told to do X and it only does X and keep the amount of if else and or logic to a minimum. Give a simplified definition of XDR for those who don't know. XDR is not a product or vendor. It's mm -hmm. a concept or mentality that involves in most cases, SIM and SOAR and automating an action that an analyst would typically go do after an alert has been received. Don't drive automation maturity for the sake of automation maturity. Understand what it means for your organization and then just go there. And little tiny steps, the beauty of automation is anything I do means that dollar spent, I get a dollar back continuously. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to go for the big win in order to get that. Stephanie Cass has a question. In most SOCs, an overwhelming amount of security data comes in from numerous systems, but stays in those separate repositories. When an analyst is evaluating a new incident, they must gather the information they need manually going from system to system. How does automation address this issue? Yes, this is a contextualization and enrichment. So it should be fully automated once the alert lands in front of the analyst lap they should do nothing that goes to connect to those other systems and pull back that enrichment. That should be a fully automated workflow that's tied to every technology and every alert type. Agreed. I only wish it was that easy because unfortunately for many companies, they rely on manual processes. They don't do the automation for any number of reasons. So again, it's where automation is a good idea, but when you actually look into a lot of companies, they still rely on annual assessments with an awful lot of manual pulling and correlation of the data. That is low hanging fruit to see a value of automation. What are risks in automating response that people may not be aware of? I would say the one where we have issues today that ends up driving very fruitful conversations is the cyber team and or the CISO or the main budget holder over the service offering and the SOC understanding business risk. So they know their cyber risk and they know I want to go do this and I want to go do X and miter this and miter that, but they're not correlating their cyber risk to their business risk to then drive their risk tolerance for the response actions. Hello, welcome to the department of yes, where no request is ever rejected. Use AI to automate everything. If Skynet's running the business, okay, mm -hmm. my job is ultimately to try to thwart the bad guys to get through to do bad things to me. And so if the if Skynet is arbitrarily turning off access and stopping things, the business processes are going to be all screwed up. But ultimately, the bad guys are not going to be able to figure out how to get through my defenses because I'm not acting rationally. So an irrational right. defense yes! through a rational offense is a win. Gross margin. I mean, just imagine the amount of people you can replace and how high your gross margin is going to be if you take that approach. That's an efficient business right there. Automate fat, fat fingered passwords after one bad attempt, then force user to do security awareness training again, and then send an email to the CISO and lock their account. Wes, why do you want to do this? That is great because as a former CISO, I want to know every single bad activity. So if you can inundate me with alerts in my inbox, I know how secure and mature my organization is. I think it's an awesome idea because when I institute punitive response to any mistake, I guarantee that people are not going to want to use the technology. And so they are not going to get things done, but boy, are we going to be safe. What are good questions security people should be asking for a, a managed detection and response organization? Like, 
what should they be asking to push them to know what they what they should yeah. be getting? Yeah, are they doing advanced correlated alerts across the time frame, or are they doing individual static alerts? I think is a great question because if you look at most that are out there today, they they do what we call alert reflection. So tell me when X happens, tell me when Y happens, and you know what they do it really, really great. Uh, but there's no logic there, and in order to right. kind of get to some of the logic that Steve was talking about, you need to have decisions with the alerts before it ever lands in the analyst lap. Do you need to have the ability to tailor the outcomes to the customer's risk tolerance? And, you know, David, the way that you handle PowerShell may be completely different than the way that Steve handles PowerShell and your risk tolerance for PowerShell based alerts and attack and LOL is going to be different. than So how does that MDR provider tailor those alerts in a way to where you can get the value out of your service provider that is your acceptable level of risk.